What up, Cowboys Nation? That's right, Julian, and I share the sentiments of R. Kelly. We lost to the goddamn New York Jets, the winless football Jets, however you want to say it. I don't know, but it was ugly. It was ugly. I don't care however you slice it. We lost to the Jets, man. But what I will say is there's silver lining behind it because we needed this loss. And I'll dive into it deeply as to why we needed this loss because what it did was it showed us that there are weaknesses to this football team and it needs to be cured now and right now. So let's get into it. Big Red is on the hot seat, man. That is the pretty much the headline of today. And quite honestly, it's well-deserved uh, because you lost to the New York Jets, man. I mean, what else do you want? I mean, if we would have won this game, it was something that we were supposed to do. And, you know, he could have skated by for another week. We would have been 4-2 and two heading into the Philadelphia game where we had margin for error to lose that game. Now what this does is... This is a must-win game for the Philadelphia Eagles. We have to go in and we have to win that game. We have to win it at home because if we lose it, I mean, you might be looking for you might be looking for a new head coach after next week, quite honestly, because this team is not performing up to standard, up to what we thought, up to expectation. And all of the excuses were out of the window after this year because you do have the roster, you have the pieces in place. Like what else is there other than the coaching? So I think that Jason Garrett is going to have to look in the mirror. And quite honestly, when he's on the hot seat, he coaches much better. So him being on the hot seat is a good thing because I don't believe he was on the hot seat before this game. But definitely waves are being made now and, and, and things are being put on notice. Guys' jobs are on the line. So I don't know what has to be done, but Big Red is on the hot seat. I know that a lot of fans out there really are just wishing for Dak Prescott's downfall. But I hate to tell you guys, but Dak Prescott played a hell of a football game yesterday. With all that he had to endure with all of the drops, how many times he was getting hit in the pocket. He stayed in there and just delivered dart after dart, man. It's not his fault, man. But I will say this. The offensive line has been getting their ass kicked ever since the Miami Dolphins game. It's been happening throughout the year. The offensive line has just not played up to par. They have not played up to par by their standards. Everybody wants to give this offensive line praise and say that they're the next wall of, uh, wall of Dallas and all of that type of stuff, but they are not playing like it. They are getting straight molly walked, and it does not look good, all right? Yesterday, they were able to, you know, kind of, you know, fatigue the Jets a little bit. They were able to do that against the Redskins a little bit, but for the most part, man, you know, it's been a stalemate every damn play. And Dak Prescott is getting hit more and more each week as it goes. And it does not look good. We are taking for granted how healthy and how durable Dak Prescott has been. But this offensive line, some things have, have, they have to change. Because what I'm telling you is, you don't want your quarterback taking that many hits. I don't care who it is. I don't care how tough it is. You need your quarterback. Because look what's behind them. Cooper Rush. The moment your quarterback goes down, the season is down the drain. Because we don't have nothing behind them. And on top of that, yes, Ezekiel Elliott had 100 yards yesterday. But Ezekiel Elliott, for the most part, all year has had to work for everything, guys. He's had to work for everything. He's getting hit at the line of scrimmage. There's nothing. No lanes. No nothing. The offensive line has to play better if we're going to win. I know Tyron Smith was out, but even with Tyron Smith in... The offensive line has not been as strong, and it's not just them. We're just getting our butts whooped up front on both sides. Our defense has become soft, guys. I don't know how many missed tackles I have to watch. At one point, you could hang your hat on the fact that this Dallas Cowboys defense was going to be aggressive when it came to tackling. And I just don't see the same aggressiveness from this year, from last year. We are They are taking advantage of something. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but... Man, we just cannot seem to tackle well. We don't seem to put hands on people coming across. Uh, maybe Cheeto does a good job of that. Uh, Byron. But other than that, man, other than our two corners, man, we don't look very physical at all. We're getting moved out of the way. We're missing tackles. And we're allowing quarterbacks to have time in the pocket. We're allowing receivers to find open space. Like I, I, it's, I can't put my hand on it other than the fact my, my I can't come to grips with it other than the fact that we've become soft and you saw what 
Aaron Jones did to us the week before that. Uh, Kamar broke a lot of tackles, even though I thought the defense played well enough to win that game. I just, I, it, it, at, at some point, you, you know, you're looking around for the flag. You're looking around for something that we've done faulty. And I think that what they have to do is get back to the basics. Once we get back to tackling well, I think everything else will fall into place. But for now, um, you know, we just, we, we lack the same confidence in this defense. And the defense lacks that same confidence in themselves. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe we're soft. Maybe we're tentative. I don't know. But this, these guys have to find their own identity. If they don't, we're going to continue to lose football games the same way. And that's the perfect segue into this next point, man. Chris Richard's ego at this point, man. I thought that it was great initially last year as far as attitude goes. But his ego is killing us, guys. Because every time I see 27 on the field, he's at least... In, in, in a position to make a play on the football, he's the only one in the secondary that is. And we don't play him. And I don't understand it. We play him when guys get hurt and he makes plays. We finally get an interception. I don't understand it. The ego is killing us. And then they tried to tell us that we don't need a safety. But it's evident we definitely do. You got let guys like Eric Berry walk because we said he's too much money. We signed George Aloka, who's not on this team anymore. We got we got guys that we keep playing Anthony Brown. Guys like Byron, Cheeto, they're not playing consistent football at this point. They're not playing like one week Cheeto's good, Byron is bad. One week Byron is good, Cheeto's bad. We're not playing very consistent in his area of expertise. They're letting us down on the back end. Now, I was talking to Mark Holmes and I was like, man, we're not getting that much pressure, but now I see why. We're getting free releases, guys. Or out of constantly out of position, you know. I I do think that there's a method to madness of his formula. I do think that it works, but I do think that it seems like he has to like the guys in order to play him. If you don't like Jordan Lewis, then trade him. But every time I look, even though he's the smallest DB that we have, he's making plays. You got to put the guys on the field that are making plays, and you can't keep constantly saying we don't need a safety when we do. Is Eric Berry still out there, guys? I'm going to keep screaming that until we we, we, we we come to grips with the fact that our safety play just isn't good enough when it comes down to it. Because maybe our corners aren't playing as good, but you got you kind of need some guys on the back end that are going to kind of help fill in with that. And I'm not going to say Xavier Woods because I think Xavier Woods is playing well. I'm going to say Jeff Heath. Even though, you know, I, 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 I give Jeff Heath some praise. I just think that if you bring in somebody better, we have the best backup safety in the league in Jeff Heath. But, he, I mean, I don't know. It, it, we just beating a dead horse at this point. But something new, I believe that Chris Richard's ego at this point has been a weak spot. And it should come to light because we will kill Keller Moore all day for his play calls. But what about our defense and their defensive play call and Chris Richard this year? He definitely deserves some blame for this three-game skid. And I don't want to seem like I'm making excuses with this next point and last point, but the officiating is just absolutely horrendous, man. I, it, it, it's to the point where it's not enjoyable watching these games because the officiating is just so bad, and it's each week. And they are plays, they are flags that are, are, are changing the whole outcome of games, man. I mean, just when I think it can't get any worse, it gets worse each week. That offensive pass interference, Early in the game on Jason Witten's touchdown. Could be the worst call that I've ever seen. And the week before that, I thought the worst call that I ever seen was seeing the, a receiver getting held by his helmet all the way down the field that resulted in an interception. I thought that that was the worst call I'd ever seen. But you know what? Maybe you shouldn't let the games come down to that, but it's the NFL and the margin of error and the margin of these games where it's so close. You know, sometimes it does matter. And I do believe that two plays mattered yesterday, the offensive pass interference. And then when we're going for two, Jason Witten damn near got tackled in front of the referees and they did not call the flag. And I know that there are a lot of people saying, well, you know what? You guys got a lot of flags going down the field. That's because they were penalties, guys. Just because we're Cowboys don't mean we don't get held, don't mean we don't get pass interfered. Just because you hate us don't mean that, we get, that Jerry has them in the pocket. Evidently, you're not watching these games because these are penalties that they called on the last drive that they could have called all game that they ha that have been happening. The rough and the passer, Dak Prescott has gotten hit in the head, fell on all year, and they don't call it. 
they call it actually when it's the worst time to happen. I mean, they're still rough in the passes when they call it, but those are the worst ones that they call. There are ones that happen throughout the course of the game that they do not even respect. They don't even call. But, you know, I digress, man. I mean, maybe you don't let it come down to the officiating because you know that it's going to be bad, but we get the worst calls. We get the worst crews ever. And it's almost like the referees make it about them and them being seen on the big stage than it is about the integrity of the football game. Yeah, but let me end this video, man. I could go on there all day. I'm already not being healthy all year. Um, you know, the play calling, all of that type of stuff. I could keep going on for days. But let me know what you guys think. I want to hear from you uh, in the comment section. What do you guys think there are our weak points this year that we can fix? Now, I will say this, guys. No matter how bad it gets, we still control our own destiny because we have the Philadelphia Eagles next week. We win that game. We're back in the thick of things. Nobody even thinks about this bad loss. We're still in the division with the Redskins and the Giants. We, the division is still ours, guys. It's still ours for the taking. We still have a shot. So I'm not as mad about this loss, even though it's a bad one. And we, 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 we barely take bad losses with Dak Prescott as our quarterback. But, you know, this is for some soul searching. I think at the end of the day, this could be the game that we look back on that says this was the turning point in the season. All right? But thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit that bell each time I come out with content. All right, guys. Peace.